Hi there, I'm Donna Wolf from Nastasia.com. Today I'll show you how to crochet easy slippers from a rectangle. These can be made to fit any foot size because we'll be measuring the length of the foot as well as the width to create our crochet rectangle. To begin, start with a chain 40 and then measure the foot. Add or subtract chains as needed to fit the foot. I like to leave about two chains above the toe part for a little extra room. Now that we have the length of the foot measured, we can begin crocheting the rectangle. Skip the first chain and make one single crochet in each chain across. We'll be using the back loops throughout this pattern, so feel free to use the back loops of the chain as well. And for all subsequent rows, chain one, turn your work, and then proceed to make one single crochet stitch in each stitch across using the back loops to create a nice effect. Plus, this gives the slippers some stretch to them. My sample foot needed 31 rows, and I would suggest making an odd number of rows so that when you sew, the ends match up nicer. The number of rows creates the width or the circumference around the top part of the foot. We'll leave a 10 inch tail end for sewing the back part of the slippers. As you can see, we'll be folding this part in half and then sewing it to create the back heel section of the slippers. This is up to you how you want to sew these. My favorite method to sew seams in crochet is to go back and forth between the two pieces, usually going underneath one section and then going underneath the other section. I end this section by doing a traditional sewing bind off by wrapping my needle with the yarn and pulling it through. Then I try to weave in the ends a bit so they don't come undone, and trim and fasten off your work. You can see what this heel section looks like thus far. And now we're going to work on the other side of the slippers, the part where our toes go inside. This will be done a bit differently than the heel section. With this, we're going to cinch the work and tie and knot it securely. To begin cinching the work, I generally like to start with a brand new strand of yarn, about 16 inches in length. Then if you notice on the end of single crochet rows, there's a little loop that sort of forms along the edge every two rows. I take my yarn strand and yarn needle and just go under that little loop part along the edge. We don't want to go under too much yarn, otherwise it will add bulk to the front and make things uncomfortable. Take the beginning and ending strand of that row and pull the strand tightly so it cinches the work together and forms an enclosed circle. Tie and knot everything as securely as possible so things don't come undone. I'm putting my foot back into the slipper because we're going to sew that top part of the slipper together until just right before our ankle section. And as before, it's up to you what method you would like to use while sewing the two sections together. I happen to still like using the underneath method and alternate between the two sides. In this case, I insert my sewing needle underneath the outer edge of one side and then I move to the other side. Continue doing this sewing method until right before the ankle starts. You don't want this section too tight nor too loose. At some point, it helps to put your foot into the work to see if everything is going okay. If all is well, you are done. However, it is traditional to sew or tie on a pom-pom for decoration. These days, I like to use products like puffy paint to help create some grip to the bottom of the slippers. I just make large dots, then let the slippers dry a day or two. And that's it. That's how I crochet easy slippers from a rectangle.